Hello everyone! Welcome back to the RashInvestor.com's Weekend Frivolity, our broiler chicken show. Bye. Well, actually, I've got the soundbar right here. I don't even have to say anything. Let's see what happens. Uh, thank you, Andrea. I think uh, uh, you were in the lounge here saying that uh, you were in the hangout with us. So uh, thank you so much. Yeah, there you are. Awesome. Um, I don't see the YouTube page going, so I never know. I've been having some problems with YouTube lately, and I don't know whether this thing's even going or not. But uh, I don't hey, see. Hey, there the it is. Hey, there's Ryan. Hey, Ryan. Man, uh, I, you know, I don't know whether you guys uh, in the uh, public uh, room there will see Ryan or not, but oh my goodness, he banged off just a monster win on Friday uh, on a funny little warrant uh, that I think somebody fat fingered. <laughs> so it just goes to show uh, the same thing happens in the stock market as uh, <laughs> as in crypto. There, you know, somebody goes, uh, place the order to buy ten thousand at fourteen cents. That's a nice uh, fourteen hundred bucks. And the guy enters it at a dollar forty, and boom, straight up it goes <laughs> right into your cellarders. <laughs> oh, I love it, and I, uh, you know, I have to say when it. I actually was really excited about today because we just got our uh, new school term off and running. And um, uh, Grim uh, Wookie is out of Oregon. So poor guy. I mean, just you can imagine um, how stressful that life is right now. So, uh, you know, our best thoughts and best wishes are with you, Wookie, on that regard. But, uh, geez, you wouldn't have known it from class today. You just... Uh, he was uh, firing on all cylinders, and um, you know the interesting thing is, I can actually start to hear it in the veterans' voices. You can, you know, at a certain point, a trader just, you know, especially if if you can survive through a bull and bear cycle. I remember when I was a a, a rookie broker. I was where I was a broker's assistant for a few years. And uh, the old guys, they would look at me and they'd go, well, pff, you know, there's no point in even listening to you because you haven't even been through a cycle. You don't even know what capitalism is. <laughs> um, and it's fascinating how you can just sort of, you know, the guys that, that and I don't know how to describe it. It's, uh, and I might sound like I'm a loss for words, kind of a weird way to start the, uh, the broadcast, but he, you just... You just hear it in a in a veteran's voice. Just the way they talk, the canter. They're generally pretty relaxed. I mean, the irony of it all is Brian's so animated and I have a crazy voice that goes up and down like, um, you know, and I have lots of funny expressions. Remember, I was a broker, so that meant that every time I picked up the phone, I had to have some smart-ass line, right, that would make the client smile and, hey, they want to do some business, you know. So I always remember that. Um, but, uh, listening to Grimm today, you know, I even, uh, told the class, uh, you know, what ends up happening is I end up becoming sort of, a the troublemaker in the back of the class, throwing paper airplanes around and stuff like that, just having fun. And, you know, I guess that's a liberty I get because, uh, I'm the old man around the place, but, uh, you know, if I can throw in little tidbits that I think help the conversation, I do. Um... But just listening to uh, Grimm, it just really makes me feel like uh, the people that, you know, took a leap of faith and believed in us. And, you know, we have these promotions and you can only listen to uh, these videos that we put together, you know, and read the testimonies. That only goes so far. But when you actually just the rubber hits the road and you just there, I have to say I was so pleased with just the the spirit, the flow, uh, we've got uh, two TAs that, frankly speaking, I think both of them could easily uh, teach the course themselves. Um, and Grim, and again, like I said, the, the the tone of his voice, I just, I know these people are in good hands. And the irony of it all is, he's saying, put your money away. 
you're here to learn the process. Uh, you know, put put away all those preconceived notions about the way that the market works, and and understand that really the irony at the end of all of this, guys, is squiggly lines are squiggly lines. Um, what it really comes down to is, can you manage yourself? <laughs> uh, know thyself, right? Just from that silly Matrix uh, movie. I mean, there's so many parallels; it's ridiculous. So. <laughs> You are now, like, officially on a journey. Um, Kvarkinator, are you here with me? Somebody's here. I think they got their microphone on. Let's see who's here. Uh, oh, it's uh, Mike Tack. Hello, Mike Tack. Mike Tack, if you could throw yourself on mute, I would appreciate it. Um, you are uh, you are being picked up, and uh, we are listening to uh, the domestic uh, conversation there going on. <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> uh, where was I? So I have to say, I was just super, super pleased. Uh, people are in good hands. Now, uh, you know, I do see there are a bunch of people watching over on YouTube. And, you know, if I can help you out uh, through these uh, free weekly offerings, uh, awesome. You know, um, I try as best as I can to drop uh, tidbits. Um, uh, but please understand the primary purpose for this sort of, you know, this uh, dovetail to the level one class, just make sure any of the concepts that were sort of taught through that uh, particular week, uh, if there were any lingering questions that uh, maybe Grim just didn't feel comfortable about answering anything, at least uh, I could take a shot at it here. So uh, we will, you know, for those people who are like, hey, well, this is kind of a funny channel, what's going on here? Um, understand that uh, the primary purpose here will be, and, and if anything, this is great. Like uh, there was one gentleman um for our most recent school term i did a contest and um uh, i can't remember who it was that won the contest but i sure hope you were in class today if you weren't i'd be really pissed off <laughs> so leave a comment if if you're watching this video but you weren't in class today um maybe <laughs> maybe i <laughs> just avoid me because i'm gonna be pretty choked <laughs> anyway we had this contest and there was one gentleman, I swear, he wrote out the most beautiful soliloquy of all the sort of sound bites of all the material that I cover. And it, I thought it was a course unto itself. So if you want like a, a free sort of cliff notes, uh, how to be a trader on YouTube videos, check out the previous broiler chickens uh, videos i'm gonna i'm gonna leave you to do the surfing so you're gonna have to find it on your own because that way we'll get more the uh, clickbait right <laughs> you're gonna have to search through them but wow like uh, and i can't even remember that there was somebody that was like jesus you gotta give the course to it for free just just for putting in all that time and effort and that's not a terrible idea you know what that person who did uh, do that, and uh, if you reach out to me, I think we'll try and find you a place in the uh, in the class because I was so impressed with that. But uh, uh, yeah, that means you are watching this week. You know who you are, so obviously the screen name. I'll go back and cross reference that. Uh, but I was so impressed that uh, hell, you deserve a free spot in this school. And I have to say, I'm I'm, uh, I'm touched. Um, this. Fall class is a big class. Uh, thank heavens we do have uh, we do have uh, two TAs that I think, like I said, they themselves could easily be instructors themselves. Uh, we got the Wookinator, and then you got Brian in the back of the class throwing paper airplanes. So I think we got you covered. Uh, but uh, it's a pretty big class. I'm, I'm going to say, and that, frankly speaking, is a testament to your belief uh, in Brian and TRI. Uh, and the principles that uh, that we uh, try to espouse, like this shit is actually getting through. Like uh, I, I have a picture of my wife uh, right on my desk right in front of me whenever I uh, do all of these videos. I'm staring right at her. And um, this all stems from her request. Um, just probably about eight years ago now. Just saying, Brian, you have the opportunity and that was the key to all that is she said you had the opportunity she didn't say you're gonna do this in fact actually I was talking about somebody this this morning I don't know why she's coming more and more I'm uh, really in a Jojo sort of mode right now but uh, she said you have the opportunity to make a 
a positive difference in this world. And that's been the message since then. And what you see on the screen here, that's a reflection of this positivity. You know, I even put a tweet out the other day. I mean, this is so fun. <laughs> this is so incredible. You know, what we've done here at TRI, remember, I'm not reinventing the wheel here. These principles are pretty much universal. And that was the great part about uh, something that Grimm even said to the new level one class today was, um, it's not like we're really reinventing the wheel. You know, we happen to put all the pieces together. So it makes for a nice sort of like, okay, I don't have to go there and find that and there and find that and there and find that. Um, and what actually is super insanely cool is when students take the principles themselves and they put their own personal stamp on the tools. And I said half of my job when I do these videos is to make, uh, you know, this whole site experience, everything about JoJo, is to actually make you people famous. <laughs> and one guy, I think we've helped. I mean, I think uh, he had a pretty big following uh, uh, initially, but I think uh, we helped him sort of sharpen up uh, what does actually a half-decent investment idea look like. Uh, and while he was in the class program, he took the opportunity to actually build a setup that I really liked and respected. And we've now like integrated it into the both the school teaching. It's a, it's a, it's a very simple, um, time-tested, methodical approach to momentum trading. So I mean, if it works, what do we say? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, and. On top of that, I've had other students who've come to me through this journey who are just brilliant programmers. And, you know, uh, TRI's CTO, I think that's his official uh, um, name. I mean, everything that you see on these uh, on these videos when I do these, all these breadth indicators, everything you see here, uh, you know, the entire site management, all the school and all that. Um, this is all the baby of uh, one, one gentleman in particular. Um, and uh, he did. I don't even think he realizes what he's built here because now we've actually enabled the uh, the expression of these setups through algorithmic uh, processes, which uh, I find very, very, it very difficult. In fact, uh, one screen that I absolutely love. I don't, I don't know whether I've shown it on um, on. Uh, um, these broadcasts, these public broadcasts, but I'm absolutely enamored with uh, with uh, key reversals. Um, this still obviously is very uh, beta right now. So uh, actually, he has till the end of the year to uh, complete the project. But uh, you can see, I mean, my screeners, the screeners that I like to use, which will be subscription based, <laughs> um, they're uh, they're producing stuff all the time. And I think I, I think I've shown you some ideas. I mean, I don't want to go down this tangent too far, but you know, this is just a great example of a student um, who took the tools taught in the education program, built a setup that he really liked, then. The community unto itself being very sort of computer oriented, you know, a student uh, has now become, of course, now an integral part of this TRI experience. I mean, that's beautiful. That's absolutely poetic. Uh, and we've articulated into now like computer programs that basically tell us these setups as they come in. Oh, just peaches and cream. Um, and, you know, I put it out on... Um, on a um, on a tweet and re remember you know anybody watching the YouTube video you know there's a, I think there's a link to a 30-day trial this is a free screener uh, that we have here and you can just go surf these ideas on your own and frankly speaking they're looking pretty good now, these are just the free ones that students have built um, still beta and of course uh, you know our, our deadline sort of when we want to officially launch is January 1st so we're still remarkably ahead of uh, schedule uh, but I was just so, so pleased to see this. It's just uh, tickles me pink. So uh, come follow along as uh, we build out these screeners. Um, and, um, and um, you know, if, if half-decent trade ideas happen to come up uh, while, you're, uh, while you're surfing, of course, the caveat M toward do your own due diligence, all that kind of, you know, talk. Uh, certainly not telling you what to buy. It's just information, right? Uh, what do we call these? Uh, 
infotainment, edge edu fame infotainment. <laughs> There's some of those words in there. Uh, but uh, super super stoked to see uh, what's going on with TRI. Um. Uh, students, I just wanted to make reference to this. You're going to find a ton of information in the library. Every single one of these is a pull-down menu with tons of different links. If you want to get lost in uh, uh, lots of material to watch and review, remember we did like a whole series of like 50 different uh, cryptocurrency uh, um, uh, videos with uh, Coinigy years ago. There's that whole library. I mean, and the great part about it is the principles. You know, the cool part about it is on these coinage shows, all those people that, uh, you know, say new level oneers, not relatively new to crypto, you can actually go and watch week by week by week by week and see how all the same principles that you're going to be learning in the school and all that, you know, hell, you guys have learned on YouTube. You can see them all week by week by week as everything plays out. Amanda's Penthouse, if you ever heard me make reference to that, there's lots of video coverage about Amanda's Penthouse uh, and the whole bull uh, run into 2017. So point here is, and you know, if you want to, we got lots of sort of, you know, the free YouTube uh, instructional videos. If, if you need stuff to do, by all means, have fun in the library. Uh, there's a ton of information in here. Uh, in fact, actually, before we even had dashboards or any of that kind of stuff set up, a lot of people said this was a great selling feature unto itself. So just an FYI there. Um, most important for level oneers, though, I really want to stress, guys, is just follow the laid out plan. Every single week, we're going to ask you to do certain tasks. And to begin with, of course, you're kind of like, get me going. I want to get going. I want to get going. Really, what you need to do now is build the tools, spreadsheets, trading plan templates, journals. What did I see? How do I feel? Did I learn anything today? And, of course, your verbal diarrhea. So if you want something to do, I encourage every single new term to do this. Some students do it. Others don't. I think it's incredibly, and you people on YouTube, you should be journaling. Uh, you could do a journal once a week. What did this clown say this week? Did I learn anything this week? How do I feel? You know, and then maybe just jot down Bitcoin up, Bitcoin down, ETH up, ETH down. Look at this funny little coin. Interesting story, whatever. I mean, hell, you can do it on a once a week basis. Point here is, you know, students, you have no choice. You have to do this. You have to. You've come here to learn how to trade. You have to do this. And this week is all about getting rid of the baggage you are bringing to TRI. What was past experiences? Uh, did you get wrapped up in any sort of, you know, scams? Um, maybe you followed newsletters. You liked a certain approach. Whatever. You got to download all that stuff onto the journal and the cool thing is if you do that and start from today then I guarantee you 12 weeks from now and that's not really very far away from a guy who's been at this for like 32 years now 12 weeks is barely a flat ironically enough 12 weeks from now we're actually going to see what <laughs> this crazy 2020 fallout is going to be so would it be a good idea to journal about everything that you're seeing right now and then in 12 weeks go back and look because that's going to be like a, that might be right in the middle of the storm absolute chaos bullets are flying in the united states of america but capitol hill's on fire oh jesus who knows i mean you never know in this crazy world and this is 2020 i mean fuck i'd be journaling like crazy right now Anyway, point here is level oneers, you have to download, you have to offload that baggage, all that emotion and shit that you're bringing to TRI, you got to download that now. And you have to somehow release those uh, pains, those fears, those anxieties. You know, you can put your money away for the next 12 weeks. Frankly speaking, I tell every single new level one term to do it. Very few do. 
And in fact, I remember one gentleman in particular, and if he's watching this video, he knows exactly who I'm talking about. And this guy literally panic dumped into like the ultimate low in Bitcoin back in like 2014, 2015. And his emotions just took over him, which is so sad. I was so heartbroken. It turns out that he sort of got his act together, was able to make a whole bunch of money on the way back up uh, through uh, 17 and I suppose early 18. So I felt pretty good about him. But make no mistake, you know, uh, emotions are going to run really high here through this fall. I like the idea of actually the market coming off here a good chunk. Um... We'll see what happens. Only time will tell. <laughs> anyway. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Ke uh, Kevin, you're here on the call here today, right? Yeah, there you are. I think that's you. Um, did we have any questions uh, put in that um, follow-up uh, document? Probably not yet anything. I don't know. Was there anything that Grim sort of said, uh, just wait till Brian's around to answer? Just want to check, like I said, uh, the purpose of this uh, this show is actually to uh, just make sure the level oneers are good to go. Okay, all right, well that's good. Um, it's about quarter past the hour. I probably should wind this up here by top of the hour, so uh, eh, just do a quick overview. Really, you know, I have to say, you know, the Monday to Friday videos, I think I'm getting pretty good at sort of summarizing the market in a fairly simple sort of synopsis. So I'll just do a quick review of that. Um, On balance, you know, the problem here, 2020, um, we're coming into what I would consider an apex event. I, you know, me personally in my teachings, I believe that the apex event was actually uh, in 2017, 2018 from sort of a long-term cycle basis. The question ultimately here is, uh, this is sort of the world's hegemony proxy. Um, and does it necessarily have to turn exactly on 2017? I don't think so. And frankly speaking, no, I should just rephrase that. It, it very rarely can you ever time these long-term cycles perfectly. It's almost impossible. Um, so what I would just sort of simply say, and this is what I've, you know, what I say in the program, and you know, you level oneers, you're going to be running into this in the next week or two. We'll probably be talking more and more about this uh, over the coming weeks. Is what we really want to sort of see is the forest through the trees. Um, I had made reference back in 2000. That was the end of the last sort of greed cycle. That was sort of through here. Uh, that at this point in you know, the U.S. dollar, especially coming out of the end of the Cold War. Um, and enjoying the baby boomers sort of heading into their peak earnings years. The emergence of this thing called the Internet, which to all intents and purposes was a very sort of, you know, uh, American story. Um, you know, I, some argue that the, uh, the whole Internet is basically just a CIA project, but anyway. Um, so, you know, the question ultimately was, uh, you know, how was that previous generation going to sort of unwind itself from the economy? And in that uh, particular instance, and if we go back and look historically, unfortunately, these kind of indexes on sites like TradingView, they don't go that far back. But uh, usually what ends up happening is you devalue the currency. And I've done lots of videos and these kind of talks. And of course, like I said, over the coming weeks, we're going to get lots and lots more of that. Um, but uh, devalue the currency, uh, you know, things like leave gold standard, all that kind of talk in a way to offset political risk because, you know, every politician learned do not do what Herbert Hoover did or you will be run out of Washington on a rail and you will never come back to Washington again. So politicians, of course, want to save their jobs, so they will sacrifice whatever they can to keep the pro 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 proletariat happy. So as the baby boomers unwound from the economy, lots of capital, of course, was pulled out of the economy. 
so much so that we actually had to figure out some sort of new solution to this. And this was this whole idea, well, hey, we can actually print more money. So instead of money actually leaving the US dollar, what we actually ended up have, having was the actual number of dollars was increased, which in essence devalues this thing. But if you look at it on a regular straight basis, right, this is sort of like a think of like uh, your trading pairs, you know. So if they dilute the shit out of the US dollar, then technically according to all your trading pairs, because remember these are fiat trading pairs, there is really no value to any of them. You've really technically diluted all of them, right, if you dilute the US dollar. So... You know, ironically enough, this is just sort of from a capital flows perspective kind of look. Um, the way that I sort of interpret this is in a weird sort of way, uh, I, I still believe that, ironically enough, you know, polit polit you know, political preferences aside, some of the policies that were put in place over the past four years have actually are, are will be extremely beneficial to uh, United States of America, Inc. Um, in sort of global trade uh, perspective. You know, I, let's call a spade a spade. You look out your window, I don't know where you live in the world, but when I look out my window, every other car is either Japanese or German. <laughs> oh, we gotta somehow make this a little bit more competitive. <laughs> <laughs> Poor American manufacturers, right? So you can make the argument that, you know, to a certain degree, you know, Mr. Trump is uh, trying to level that playing field. And I think the policies that he's trying to put in place are beneficial to corporate America, which is going to make the capital stock of the country worth more. But anyway, being a U.S. dollar, a U.S. Being a USA Inc. bull right now is quite unfashionable, eh? <laughs> if you look around the world, that's a terrible policy to have. But that's Brian. Brian, of course, is a total contrarian. When we were at the top of the dot-com boom, uh, you know, the, the message then, and of course, none of you knew me then, but I was a stockbroker then, of course, this was the time to buy gold. And to get super excited of gold, because we were going to go through one of these crazy devaluations. And basically, that's what's happened over the past, um, you know, I guess, basically, better part of 20 years. The interesting thing here, though, is I think we're heading into the apex of this devaluation event. Um, and sadly, I think what I'm hearing from the public is... Uh, is um, they are getting most pessimistic and that makes perfect sense that's basically what's supposed to happen right the public always buys at the top sells at the bottom public always uh is most euphoric during bull markets help uh, DeFi there a few weeks ago if you were a DeFi trading god man you got laid like that in crypto land does that that doesn't make any sense though <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Shane. Hey, uh, they're all in mom's basement. I don't know if there are any chicks. In. <laughs> oh, I know. In Decentraland. That's where you got the fucking chicks all over you. <laughs> and then now the ladies are going, hey, but Brian. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, so for the ladies, if you were a DeFi player a couple weeks ago, you were the shit. Right? Um, I think to all intents and purposes, DeFi is a sort of another evolutionary stage of this uh, space. But at the same time, too, seeing the euphoria and the parabolic price movements, that in itself was a tell that, uh-oh, uh, maybe a little too far too fast. Anyway, I love the technology, and now on pullbacks, I get weekly Ws in DeFi. Fuck, I'm, you know Brian, I'll be in there buying in fact, buying when they're crying. Anyway, just finish off this U.S. dollar kind of rant here. What I'm expecting is for the public to be most bearish of this uh, through this cycle window. And ironically enough, I wonder whether that's almost like a fulcrum right there on my crazy generational pivot. 
I, I do find it interesting how that's been straight line up, straight line down. This has been chop. That tells me we're probably going to go through some chop here. I wouldn't even be surprised if sort of like, you know, maybe six, eight months from now, there's some sort of, uh, you know, massive um, stimulus program that's finally pushed through the system that really knocks the U.S. dollar down. You know, maybe we spend a couple of years swimming around these lows and then, you know, we start marching our way higher, kind of like coming out of the 80s and into the 90s, we started this nutso insane old bull run. And that's what I would expect the latter half of this sort of generational pivot, you millennials heading into your peak earnings years. That's the kind of price action that I'll be expecting. But... You know, in a weird sort of way, you can see how sort of late 80s, how long did it take for this to turn? This was, you know, mid uh, baby boomers bull cycle. So, you know, we might have to go through something like that. And then ultimately the end of this fear cycle is expressed or some sort of nutso insane old bull run, which would be good because believe it or not, this is deflationary. Um, and uh, it, it implies a bit of price stability. So eh, we'll see what happens. Only time will tell. Point that I would just make in the short term here is um, we're heading into this big sort of cycle event here. Uh, end of uh, September, well, I guess October, we have some sort of big uh, Mars conjunct, which I'm worried about for sort of war. Um, you know, the in November, I think we have a big uh, Jupiter, Saturn, Pluto event. Uh, and I almost feel like it's going to be like, oh, phew, okay, finally, can we get beyond this? Maybe we have a bit of reprieve on sort of U.S. dollar uh, bearishness, which to me actually would mean that, you know, if we do end up pivoting through that, you know, through this event, and keep in mind here, right, that's sort of like uh, there's November, which is the U.S. election right there. Could we have another spike lower here to carve out that pivot? Sure, why not? And could this kind of move lower actually engineer a huge blow off top and things like gold and maybe a nice little rally in the corn? Sure. Um, but... Uh, this is going to be really messy just getting through this pivot in here. And you can, you know, you've heard me say V tops, V bottoms. That's a V top. It's really messy. My hunch is we probably got to trade back up into this level at some point down the road. Uh, this was a V bottom even just a week or two ago, right? This is a weekly price chart. So you know this low is going to have to be tested at some point down here. Uh, and interesting, too, on the public videos, I make reference to the fact that, you know, if I actually wanted to buy this thing, this this is okay, but we got this little fog and bomb crazy chaos level floating out here just below. Could we have another FU against this level? I think so. In fact, the, being this close to one of these crazy chaos levels, I don't think the market can't hit that. And then, you know, where is the original structure? I often tell students, a good thing, you know, note this down, the guy who makes those notes all the time on these videos. When we're crashing down here, what's the best way to think of support? And the answer is, like, look left. So if I look left and I go, okay, where's the next sort of key support area? Well, you can see it's that low right there. That's the last time... You know, somebody said, no, stop going down, you go up. No, I said, stop going down, you go up. Okay, well, there's a goddamn W. Fine, uh, up we go. So that's the fight, right? Off a uh, good old, you know, ever, let's see if anybody on YouTube, uh, you like that sound effect, Colleen? Colleen likes that. Uh, hey, let's see what's going to this is actually like free school, <laughs> you guys, yeah. Uh, am I talking too much? I don't know. I mean, we're not even really, we haven't even got to the corn yet, eh? Um, hey, we even have uh, Brian-isms on the, um, uh, yeah, we have it in the library. Uh, somebody did a whole bunch of sound bites from uh, the last cycle. Uh, so uh, I don't know whether you ever saw that page. I try. I don't know whether we tried to update it or not. <laughs> that would be funny, right? 
Uh, over here? Somewhere. Uh, I don't know. There you are, BCS sound bites. Oh, boo. I guess you have to sign in. Anyway. Um, let's see what this is. Oh, hey, that's probably Andre's uh, sound bite. <laughs> Thank you. There you go. Uh, but I do know we had a page. We had like a whole page of them. Anyway, so uh, go Fisher. Oh, there you go. Oh, Empire Soundbite. Dun, dun. Oh, there you are. TRI Soundbites. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, there you go. Just, <laughs> we got tons of them. <laughs> and load more. I mean, let's see what this is. Step right up. Ride the Ferris wheel. <laughs> Who can tell me what uh, video game that's from? Uh, if you can, then uh, you're a total 80s kid. So uh, go check that out. And actually, we could probably add more, right? Eh? <laughs> oh, goodness. Always a fun time at TRI. All right. So um, I don't think we're really done here. And I do like the idea, you know, um, in the sort of free weekly videos, I've been thinking lately that this gold looks like it wants to set up to, to have a move higher here. Sure looks to me. This is almost it. You know, what was really interesting is we did videos all through this, and we walked people through this bot setup, and it was quite remarkable how the market pretty much almost hit that. I think the bot, bot target was like 2,000, and it was really interesting to watch as we went up through this peak here. You just go back and watch old BCS or the, or the daily videos. I mean, it was so cliche. And then what was really interesting was... As price went beyond the bot target, the, the way the public just went stupid. <laughs> I mean, they just went dumb. Um, and, of course, bang, you know, whoa, I hiccuped <laughs> through the bang. Uh, they all got bitch slapped. So I got a sneaky suspicion. You can see what the old gold is up to here. This is a tough one, though. I ain't going to make this easy. What you probably want to do here is you want to, you know, go and see if the gold stocks are confirming this. Probably also to, you know, the trade. Like, where are we here? We're now in, um, what month is this? September? I think we're September, right? I think that sounds about right. Um, so if you're going to, like, futures trade this, probably the trade is actually, like, to buy, um, February gold or something like that. So, uh, you know, because keep in mind, these guys are futures traders, right? So, no, nobody nobody in their right mind would be trading this front month. That just doesn't make sense. But that's, that actually defeats the whole point of the futures contract. But, of course, people get wrapped up, and you saw what happened in that, uh, in that silly... Um, um, I was doing a fun study here, uh, Bitcoin relative to gold. And actually, I'm thinking whether this might be a really interesting uh, study to follow. Because in essence, this is sort of like uh, uh, Antonopoulos versus Schiff. <laughs> right? And actually, I was making reference to Antonopoulos. He's sort of like the Bitcoin uh, cheerleader. Uh, level oneers, somebody in the level one class was, uh, you know, said, where can I actually go learn about crypto without, you know, getting loaded up with a whole shill? Uh, and I think, you know, listening to uh, listening to Antonopoulos is, is in your best interest. Uh, he's going to he's going to give you this straight story without. Oh, and uh, buy my coin <laughs> at the end of it. Right. <laughs> if uh, and I had asked. Um, yeah. And Shane, you probably know. Because uh, some of the level oneers, believe it or not, they've actually come to TRI. They haven't got a clue what crypto is. So <laughs> I've uh, that we were asked in class today, what's um, what's a good um, uh, what's a good sort of introduction to crypto uh, video? Uh, you know, if there is such a YouTube feed or something, just to learn. You know, uh, without getting, of course, shilled. So. Anyway, uh, level oneers, if you're watching, I strongly suggest, and I think I posted this in the classroom. This is a good one. Shane, if you happen to have any links or anything, you could throw them in the lounge. I'd love you for it, dude. Uh, okay, so back to the story. Where were we? Once upon a time, I was talking about something. Oh, yeah. Um, 
So, you know, sort of uh, that conversation about what I have sort of Monday to Friday. And, you know, half of the reason why I'm talking about this is I'm not really overly bullish about, you know, things like taking shots on cryptocurrency right now. So I don't, you know, I'm, I'm a little leery. Remember, you know, ultimately, interestingly enough, gold is an ultimate fear proxy. So, you know, if there is a real break in the system and gold takes off, it might be, you know, and interesting, like my conversation on the site is I like to watch sort of the risk on risk off assets. And I noticed that people are piling into the yen really hard here. So that's not a good sign for the market. <laughs> uh, this is, we have grave concerns for the U.S. financial system. Because keep in mind, Japan's not really, quote unquote, growing. So uh, they're, they're in just as much a deep a poop as anybody else. I think probably also, too, there's uh, probably a bid coming in. Because there is a new leader in Japan, and um, you know, people might feel as though he might be a little more empathetic to sort of stimulus talk and you know, get the economy going, kind of thing. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, also too, you know, we have to uh, watch the sort of rhetoric between China and Japan right now. I bet that that's going to ratchet up here now. Now, I wouldn't even be surprised. Global controversy 101. You're actually going to hear more talk of Japan remilitarizing now. I noticed that uh, Taiwan now seems to be in play. And uh, uh, not only is the U.S. State Department uh, sending officials to Taiwan, which uh, they haven't done in 40 years. That was sort of a big no-no. You're crossing a line there. So that's a bit dangerous, but also, too, from what I understand, some pretty big military contracts are being signed. So uh, the temperature is ratcheting up in Southeast Asia, folks, no doubt about it. Uh, be aware. Anyway, bottom line from our perspective is, woo-wee, that yen's taken off like a rocket. And really what we should see is we should see, I mean, you can see the coil, the almost identical coil in gold. We should see this gold ratchet up here, too. So eh, mark my words, probably putting my neck in the noose here, but it sure looks to me like that gold wants to pop here. The sort of funny sort of cavat, I mean, what the hell's going on there? Uh, are the U.S. bonds in play here? I am, you know, the Fed has publicly come out and said that we're actually in favor of inflation. What I think they're actually saying to the public is, if you happen to see long-term interest rates go up substantially here because the market now believes that we have to now start pricing potential for inflation to come into the system, <laughs> what does that mean about bond prices? Let's see if anybody on YouTube can actually put the two together. The Fed has actually said, get ready for bond prices to do what? The Fed has publicly come out and said it. So if it actually does happen now, they can't say, hey, you weren't warned. All right, guys, do you see the connection? I was actually quite surprised that nobody in the public was even talking about that. Basically, the Fed has said, hey, look at it, nobody said anything on YouTube. How about you people in the lounge? Is that is anybody? Yeah, I, substantially, because what if... And maybe all you level oneers should go actually into the library <laughs> and watch the videos on how the bond market works. Right? And what's so cool, of course, is uh, the great dovetail that uh, video Ray Dalio did. I think it was Ray Dalio on how the money system works. So if you actually watch these two together, like watch what is a bond and how do they work? If interest rates are expected to go up what direction are they saying that bond prices are expected to go if you can't answer that question then yeah you better get in here and watch these videos <laughs> and then like i said what's really cool is uh how we sort of work all of these together and then dovetail it with uh, this cool video that was uh, done by i think it was ray dalio um yeah there he is super popular 18 million views everybody loves him 
and how the two sort of go hand in hand. If you can understand how the two go hand in hand, then actually you understand how, why the whole damn economy is such a fakizi right now. <laughs> but anyway, that's a topic for another day. So point here, you know, it does have me scratching my head a little bit. I'm actually a bit surprised that the bonds are not doing better. And I have actually a funny feeling that the Fed's kind of said, you know what, we'll just let the bond prices do what it is. And, you know, China, well, maybe we're going to sell some U.S. bonds here since they're not very friendly. I mean, would that surprise anybody? I don't think so. What should happen here, though, and this is this will be really interesting to watch, is you can see that the stocks, they're wavering here right now. Uh, it was interesting to watch oil, and we had a fun, you know, watch the uh, weekly videos. We have fun conversation about oil. Remember I've said before, I actually think that crypto has been an excellent leading indicator. Is there any letter of the alphabet you see working on Bitcoin right now that's maybe going to have you a little bit concerned if you're a bull? <laughs> Anyone, uh, whether it be uh, you know, and then uh, let's see if anybody on YouTube is anybody. Anybody, Andrew, of course you're. Uh, and actually, what was it uh, you posted? You wanted me to look at something. I remember uh, you posted on the YouTube comments. You wanted me to look at something. Um, but is there any letter of the alphabet like uh, doot doot? Is there any letter of the alphabet that you see? that maybe you, when you see it, you've got to go, oh, oh, maybe I better slow down. <laughs> I can't say that on air, Will. I hope you're not swearing at me. <laughs> uh, it's, a, you know, the Bitcoin chart's a bit problematic right now, right? I mean, that's that's the simple message. It's problematic. It doesn't mean Bitcoin's going to zero, it doesn't mean that that uh, you know Bitcoin isn't a great money transferring vehicle. I think all the fundamentals are all the same. But if you're buying bitcoins for capital gains purposes, uh, I I I won't be. I mean, good luck. Obviously, you know, like what you do with your money is your business. There's nothing about this uh, video channel or anything. Uh, yeah, that's right. You know, I mean, uh, according to Big House, Bitcoin's guaranteed to always go up, right? Um, there's nothing about this channel that tells you, look, at you have to buy this, and if you buy this, you get Lambos. There's nothing about this, right? This is li literally this channel really should be just one market participant talking to another, and I'm actually talking to you all individually. Yeah, big house, I'm looking you straight in the eye. The question is, which window are you in in this damn big house? It's so big. <laughs> SP500, are you are you sticking your tongue out at me? <laughs> yeah, you would think. The only problem is when I say that, Will, I guarantee you the exact opposite happens. So I'm not even going to mention it. <laughs> this is edutainment, right? And the good thing is, uh, you know, the students really didn't have too many questions. So I'm just sort of talking out my ass here. Um, you know, so if you believe that Bitcoin's a leading indicator, which I, I do, I, I actually think that uh, if you were a risk taker in the marketplace and you were going to bet on something that is going to grow, you know, crypto story's not bad. I mean... Does uh, does the crypto story does it it really is it affected at all by crypto or uh, by uh, what's that the hell damn thing called COVID right? Not really. I mean, I, and I you know I sort of I think I did sort of public tweets about this in a weird sort of way. You know, I suppose this is Brian Ryderick rant. Sorry, I hope it doesn't offend you. Uh, well, I thought I had that Twitter stuff out here, but. Um, you know, actually, we have one site member. I think he's on the call here because I, I think I was chatting with him a minute ago. Um, he uh, put together a, one of the things that we do on sort of our education programs is uh, he put together a script that uh, tries to sort of put an, a dollar figure on um, on um, uh, what it actually costs to make one of these things if you use different equipment and you have you know different electricity charges and stuff. 
Um, actually, for this model, we've used extremely low electricity prices. I think uh, the defaults on this were like uh, like five cents. And actually, I've noticed that a lot of people are like ten cents. But I think if you have your electricity subsidized, that five cents is probably accurate. Um, you know, for the uh, S19s, we've gone with 53, and the S, excuse me, S19s, uh, 110, the S17s, 53. Uh, so Shane says uh, 0 0.05 is uh, commercial rate, so that's kind of cool. And, uh, you know, I think I've told you before, like, Kevin's uh, told us that if you go, uh, well, yeah, I guess you're not going to be mining in Germany too much longer, eh? <laughs> What do you think? Do you think these uh, crypto OGs have operations in 30 cents a kilowatt hour locations? I doubt it. <laughs> it's pretty simple. And frankly speaking, I mean, if you got, like, a fucking nuclear submarine, why not take the sub offshore and you got all the electricity you want? I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, if uh, Putin's got little fleets of, uh, you know, all these old nuclear subs just parked out there in the middle of the Pacific mining the shit out of Bitcoin. <laughs> you know, that wouldn't surprise me at all. <laughs> but if we go with sort of a nice, simple, and frankly speaking, I think this is probably more realistic, tinfoil hats, all that kind of crap, right? Um... A nice realistic study. I think this, you know, this this particular tweet, I think it gives us a band that we can at least use as, because remember, whenever you're trading a commodity, um, it will be in favor, it will be out of favor, it will be driven by sentiment. And the worst part about it, this is the worst part is that you know when the wall street guys see all the criteria in place for a nice big powerful move they are going to just crank that son of a bitch i mean i remember in the you know the spring of 2017 um wattage is wrong where you got wattage. I have no idea. All I did was just copy this. I have no idea. I do know that um, um, I googled S19 and they said 110. So uh, that's where I came up with that number. Like if you just google uh, S19 it says 110. But I don't know if that's right or not. So um, Your hash right is, your hash is right. The wattage is wrong. All right. So it'll be like 3.25. But yeah. It'd bring up the S19 to like maybe 4, 4K instead. Okay, I could live with that. Uh, I'll make the alterations and note afterward. Thank you, sir. Isn't it great? Like this is this is the kind of guy I am. Um, I have no ego in this. I couldn't give a shit. Uh, somebody comes on here and says, eh, Brian, that's actually not right. Uh, this is the correct thing. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I don't have any ego in this. The point I'm trying to convey here is, you know, and it's great that Shane's like, I hey, yeah, correct that, please. But <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> you guys are actually way, way smarter in this space when, uh, when um, it comes to the actual technical ease of these. So that's great that you're already calling me out. But what do you think, Shane? Does the general message sort of jibe? Do you get the general message of what I'm trying to convey here? And really, that's what I'm going here for the public. Is in a, in a weird sort of way, I actually think that we have one of these sort of rational investing windows that could potentially develop here. It doesn't mean that it's going to, but it, it's floating out there. And I think uh, as a, as a um, how do I say this, uh, as a shopper in the market, you know, uh, you know, you go to the grocery store and you see that uh, the grocery store has uh, this particular product. It happens to be really popular and oh, gee whiz, the price is marked up a bit. And you're like, oh, I'm not going to pay that price. Those cocksuckers, <laughs> right? Hey, we've all been there, right? And I bet you've all said that too. <laughs> um, conversely, right? 
Sometimes you go to the grocery store and they're like, oh, yeah, we happen to have two delivery trucks of this crap here. It was supposed to be one, but Bob screwed up in the back office. We got to move this shit out of here. We got way too much of it. And they mark it down. They put it on sale. Ironically enough, (laughs) when most consumers actually go to the grocery store, the knee-jerk reaction, I know it's from me, is I don't want to look at this stuff on sale because that means there's something wrong with it. I don't know. Have any of you been in that situation before? I tell you, when that, you know, uh, Grim was even telling the class this morning, when, you know, the stock market, just like everything else, sort of in a weird sort of way, but the stock market, it's the only business when stuff goes on sale, nobody wants to buy. <laughs> it's just the way it is. You know, if you are a cheap ass like Brian, well, you often actually go to the discount shelf first. (laughs) So it really all depends, I suppose, on what type of person you are by nature. Remember, I'm one of those cheap ass kind of guys, so... Uh, I, I don't, I, I definitely don't follow the herd, you know, like, uh, there are a lot of people that buy things like iPhones and the latest iPhone and all that, just because they need to be fashionable and they need to be part of the crowd to a certain degree. I think within crypto, you just saw that to a certain degree in this DeFi space. Um, you know, through the week, Monday to Friday, we have really a uh, great gentleman uh, came on uh, on Friday's broadcast who is a miner, and he explained the benefits of uh, of of the DeFi Uniswap idea, and frankly speaking, it's incredible technology. I think it's uh, evolutionary; it's a natural step forward. All these centralized exchanges. They should be shitting their pants right now. Uh, basically, their business model is is over as far as I'm concerned. Um, and also, too, I bet you central bankers are probably looking at what's going on. And they're a bit concerned as well. It, this could potentially put the fiat currency system business model out of business. So... You know, it's interesting to watch the evolution of space. I think, unfortunately, we're still very early. And, you know, you get too many people that rush through the turnstiles too quickly. We can actually, Kevin has been sharing on the site as sort of an update, play-by-play, the the chart of ETH gas fees. And I think, you know, the tell... The, we're just getting a little bit too far ahead of ourselves. Yes, the technology is awesome. Yes, this is the future. But you just got too many people going through the turnstiles too quickly. Is when you start seeing things like, you know, on Bitcoin uh, recently, um, you know, the network usage kind of charts going all haywire. Uh, these kind of little tells are, are just, you know, again, learn this. <laughs> you know, don't have to sit and whine. I mean, it, it's I'm not chilling you to buy a fucking newsletter here to buy my coin. I want you to learn this. Um, gotta find the chart though. Ah, oh, my head's gonna explode. I hate when that happens because I get all excited and then oh, I can't find the damn chart. I think it's on the other screen. Um, now, now you see I got three screens going. Oh, Jesus. Um, over here. There we are. You know, these kind of tools, they just sort of keep you out of trouble. Uh, if you see price up in here, maybe, you know, maybe just cool your jets for a little while. Uh, I don't know whether Trading fee, Trading View has a uh, e, uh, the ETH gas fee as a data print, but wow, that would be an awesome data set to, uh, to track. And, you know, the bottom line here is that that is your tell that, uh, hey, you know, we've gone too far too fast. Uh, we got to cool down. We got to clean up um, fundamentally. You know, either the network is stressed out, it can't handle it, you know, the transaction fees to actually get a trade done. And then, of course, everybody's in a big hurry and they just fat finger. They don't realize the actual dollar figures because they're in. ETHs, so it's not like you do the math right away, 
they don't realize how much they're actually paying for that cup of coffee that you thought was three or four dollars but you know at the end of it it might be ten dollars <laughs> so that's just it's just gonna make the 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 this it's our tell especially as traders it's our tell that hey you know what uh, you know maybe we just need things to calm down a bit um uh kind of ranty there a little bit sorry about that so what i just simply wanted to say about an image like this is we might if we're really lucky this fall if we go into some sort of big fucking covid uh china tension uh, you know, uh, political uncertainty, U.S. dollar in free fall, gold going parabolic, risk assets, stock market crashing. If we go into one of those kind of uh, windows and we're really lucky and they just rip Bitcoin a new asshole here, it might actually set up a really fantastic buying opportunity. <laughs> which kind of sucks right because really what i'm rooting for is i'm literally rooting for bitcoin to lose like 50 percent of its value here but the irony of it all is if you were a miner and you know there's one company that just took delivery of something like five thousand what was that uh, uh it's, that number's probably too high. i think it's like 1100 1100 s19 miners and even at Shane's adjusted rate of, say, 4 Gs, are they making any money mining Bitcoin at 4 Gs right now? And could the market maybe take away a bit of that premium, but are they still making money? Yeah. So the network's not in trouble at all if price comes off here. So just be forewarned. Like the way that I look at this is she's trading on momentum. We uh, had the happening event here. And I remember, you know, naturally, I think the market should have rolled over here. But what happened here? This was the DeFi orgy. And what was really interesting is I did charts up this, you know, violently flat. What does the summer look like? And we sort of said that we thought there could be shots up top here and we just called them moon boys we didn't actually have a name because we didn't know what the reason for this rally was going to be um we started setting up divergences up top here and that sort of said hey cool your jets and then you know like that risk on risk off image that i was just talking about i mean what are we supposed to think if we see an m right um DeFi astronauts. <laughs> so, you know, the, the market's got an M working. So maybe just, you know, let's just cool our jets. I mean, it would be really awesome if just like this, you know, following this M, we just qu quietly just calm down, start actually making higher lows, tightening up all the Bollinger Bands came in all nice and tight through here. That would be cool. But as it stands right now, and, you know, for the past week or two, my commentary is, like, I'm staring this big honking M right in the face. How can I be bullish? I mean, yeah, the market's worked its way back up. And what's ironic here is all the market has done is just come right back up to this breakdown level, the middle part of the M. They sort of kiss the underside of it. And now we're sort of sitting there going, okay, now what do we do? Um, I <laughs> I wanted to invest in bitcoins. It would be down here, not up here. So you're like, okay, well, Brian, that's nice, but what the fuck's going on here in the short term? I want to trade. <laughs> okay. Um, way I've been looking at her of late is uh, here's a four hour chart. There is that big M top, that sort of head and shoulders. I still think this head and shoulders actually isn't finished. I think 200% is down here, which is a little bit scary. Um, what I'm actually starting to see right now, um, actually, let's see, is this the best one? Yeah, I suppose we should talk about DeFi. This looks, DeFi does not look good here. Um, I thought I had it on another chart though. 
where did I do up my fun little Bitcoin charts? Uh, maybe I. You know what? Actually, God damn, Seward's fucking algo. I told you guys uh, at the start of this. I mean, I just love the fact, uh, and I'm getting totally off topic here. Sorry. But, you know, you see that Bitcoin chart. It looks like a train wreck. Ethereum looks bad. But look at that. Look at that chart. It just looks so beautiful. You little cutie. And the algo is, uh, pay attention to this one. Or not the algo, but the uh, the uh, screener on the site's like, hey, pay attention. I mean, Jesus, it just looks so pretty. I can't I can't get filled here, with <laughs> bastards. Uh, oh, well. Um, okay, so uh, what I wanted to show you, maybe I have it off of here. Yeah. So, uh, you know, coming into the weekend, we were pointing up. But notice, oh, geez, you see that momentum move. This is why these bear divergences are such a pain. The rally just stalled. And, you know, you see this high on momentum, the MACD high, that's, a, that's even a lower high. So now what we have, and now that we've sort of gone through this middle part, that big honk in M is now fired. And now we also have this one, right? Because this high is lower than this high. And this high right here is higher, but this high is lower than this high. That's a double divergence. So in the face of that, do we have any rules at TRI? If you see a bearish divergence, what should you probably do? And here's the kick in the pants about this is yeah we were kind of like eh, you know what well, maybe we're gonna bot our way higher here but you know that bot that tried to come in was in the face of a confirmed bearish divergence so what are you supposed to do right we'll even mark it on here bearish divergence confirms right there so as of that point if you're bullish oh boy you better just do nothing <laughs> it's so ironic right so that's right there and basically you could argue right now we're just sitting exactly where that divergence fired. I mean, basically nothing's happened here. Where is that? It's over there. So that's over there. And also, too, look how this entire price pattern all through this, the bullshit to try and take us to new eye, new divergence on that. Look how it's on almost no volume at all. That's dangerous. When they take the market to new high and you see no buying pressure here, uh-oh. Now, the one good thing, but you can see this might be changing here. The one good thing about all this is the bears didn't go absolutely apeshit. But it, you can see the bears are starting to ramp up their volume. We got, uh, what is that, 591 on that candle, 790 on that candle, Let's make sure our candle colors are correctly. Think, oh, oh, thinking about you, Paz. If you're watching this, there we go. So that's more accurate. So what did we say here? 591, 790, 835. So the bears, they're waking up here. You can see the bulls are trying to wake up. Bulls need to on this four hour candle. You know, you'd like to see it if this thing really is a bull. You want to see more than 687 there. On this candle, we've done 574 so far. So you can actually see that the bears are carrying the trade right now, right? Obviously more, 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 right? They're active. The bears might be falling asleep here, but you can see they're kind of like, it's incumbent on the bulls. Bulls got to wake up here and take over. And in the face of this confirmed bearish double D, that is going to be damn difficult. You're literally trying to stop a train in mid stride here. Whew, that's going to be tough. What's really interesting I find about these videos, though, is sometimes uh, what ends up happening is they sort of set up a move here midday. I do the video about midday, then I go off and hang out with Liam for the afternoon, and I come back in the evening, and by the time I come back in the evening, they've cleaned all this up, and we're getting ready for a new base. This is a four-hour chart, though. That's, that's, tr that's problematic, problematic, trouble, disaster, horrible, ugly, terrible. <laughs> what other words can I use? This is also too, oh, especially for all the Julian RSI fans. So there's bots, totally toast. See you later, buddy. Poof. Um, <clears throat> interesting on that bot, and this is why I really like trading that bot. I don't know whether you see that. 
But if I was futures trading here, and this is why you have these rules in here to keep us fucking honest. If you took this bot and said, look at I'm a trader's got to trade. Maybe you took that fractal, whatever. Oh, look at me. I'm a badass motherfucking trader. Look at me. Notice we hit move stop to scratch level, and then we just stopped. <laughs> and you had to have the balls, the professionals, and the cojones that when we came down in here, you just had to walk away. And sure enough, you avoided all that. So really good reason why I liked using this as when I was prop trading is uh, this kept me out of a lot of trouble. So the botters, they'd be gone. Uh, LJers, I don't know. I mean, they're being tested right now. Probably LJs are going to hang in here through this W here. Looking tenuous. Now you can see they're trying to bring her back. Uh, and then actually we did a really fun example of the bull bear battle lines. I think that was off a daily chart. So you can see that uh, we set up this battle heading into the weekend. So we had coil, you know, there's that, the coil. There's the bull bear battle lines. We said if we broke out through the top uh, and accepted above there, then away we go. You know, that breakout translated into move stop to scratch, and then that was it. <laughs> Straight down after that. So bull bear looks that to me looks like a big head fake, um, and probably really no real major resolution off of this level yet. Just that we've got the confirmed bearish divergence. Ironically enough, bulls, you're probably best just to cool your jets until this uh, cleans itself up. If you <coughs> haven't used divergences before, trust me, they keep you out of a lot of trouble. And, uh, you know, if you just wait, like, you know, here's probably a good example. We're making higher highs. Something's not right here. You just wait until, oh, gee whiz, look at all these W's now starting to come in. That's better if you took a shot there. You had a little bit of a rally. I don't know whether that really translated into much you can use. Um, yeah, actually, I don't really see much in the way of W's. There was a tight one here, but I hate when they look like that. So ironically enough, looking at this, this actually reinforces the bear notion. I was just making, referencing this very quickly earlier. You know, those RSI fans. When RSI goes into divergence, oh, that's even worse. <laughs> that's RSI does not go into divergence very often. So that's why I don't really like using it as a uh, trade setup tool because it just doesn't happen that often. And then also, too, oh, geez, I had insult to injury. Who can tell me what level did that M just confirm off of? Is that a good sign or a bad sign? And uh-oh, I think we colored the correctly because this looks like the first M, which would be our teal. So you can actually see that this actually sets up an RSI breakdown trade. <laughs> oh, Jesus. So, you know, you put it all together. This doesn't look good. I'll tell you. It looks challenging. Uh, now, hopefully I'm wrong. And we go straight up from here. Um, I suppose off of like lower times, time frames, let's try and find some sort of reason to get bullish. Um, boosh. So we're running stops. Looks like they just ran some more stops down in here. Okay, here we go. A oh, one hour. If you want to buck the overall trend, eh, I wouldn't do it, but if you wanted to. Maybe uh, watch for this one hour RSI, or excuse me, uh, MACD histogram divergence to play out. So that was on, remember we said double Ds, eh? That was this break here. That confirmed that bigger divergence there. And you can see right after that event, okay, they're trying desperately to firm things up here. So if you are hunting along, I mean, again, it's not in, in the face of that four hour looking like a nightmare, in the face of um, of um, the uh, the daily looking, it's tough for me to justify longs in here. But nonetheless, you know, if you're hunting, um, Willie did go stupid. You've got a potential. Actually, the div looks like it's now confirmed. So if you do get a W that comes in through the day, maybe really keep a real close eye on these candle body lows. Um, you know, maybe RLZ, that range in there, if you get some sort of pivot here. But those are for the really slick day trader types. 
this this is very dangerous for uh, for most new people to trading. So, and I don't even really like talking one hour with the public here. So let's get the hell out of there. Um, four hours uh, to me, for whatever it's worth, just my opinion. The bulls probably best just to cool their jets uh, and wait for all of this yuckiness to resolve itself because that's just a world of mess here. So there you go. Merry Christmas. Um, I had said earlier, remember, this was off of this massive M top on the dailies. Can you see how all they did? This is what they call a Wyckoff check going the other direction where you have, get market structure that comes in, big fat M, boom, sell signal. Ah! Remember, institutions can't sell down markets. So all you level oneers, especially uh, recent level twoers, you remember you just did this. Level oneers, you will do this down the road. So if I was an institution and I wanted to get short off of this level, what do I do? Well, believe it or not, actually, we're going to try and engineer some sort of reason for the market to counter trend rally, whatever the reason may be. Um, and then we're going to get the public kind of thinking bullishly and sort of euphorically bullishly as they rally price into the level that we actually want to sell. So that way, they're all nice and bullish and, hey, buy, 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 panic buying, FOMO, all that right into our sell order so we can get filled in size. Does that make sense? It's uh, it's not, not surprising one bit. So uh, have we topped here yet? Eh, that's tough. Problem with this chart, right, is, um, you know, just like you saw that M off of the daily chart. I mean, technically, if we rallied up into here and then we just failed, yeah. I mean, it wouldn't shock me if that was the case. But usually, think market structure, usually markets like to top out with a big M, which establishes a new downtrend line, or put in a bottom, a W, which establishes a new uptrend line. Right? That's, that's how, if the market was left to its own devices, that's how it would resolve this. And usually, um, this M, not usually, but quite often, it might have like a lower high on this side, and then what does that kind of look like? And this is how often markets, you know, transition from I'm a bull to I'm now a bear. This is just the way that they do it, right? So, um, what I'm trying to say here is, Often this M is actually part of a bigger fractal. Now, can you kind of see what the market's doing here? <laughs> Notice what I'm sort of anticipating here. <laughs> so this is actually what I think is going to happen here, but who knows? So what? It's just Brian's opinion. We might just cascade lower here. I doubt it. And yeah, like I said, you can already start to see some back and forth. You know, on those lower time frames, the little slick traders, they're going to be hunting these candle tails, right? And that tail in there, and that tail in there. I often talk about candle body lows for trade location. But uh, if anything, what I kind of like is the idea, maybe use this counter trend rally to square up positions. And then if we get any sort of, you know, top, and look at, you know, this is just a fractal of what I, this action was. But... You know, maybe we get some sort of failure right here. And actually, I think that sets up a very interesting potential trade. So, uh, Shane, actually, you know, like Tuesday, Wednesday, London kill zones. I wouldn't mind us sort of keeping an eye out for this event. And maybe think uh, our little plan, uh, we go and maybe pick up a Bitcoin put if we can get that kind of action. So, uh, I don't know whether Shane's still here. If you're watching this later on, I'm talking to you. Yeah, all right, there you are. Um, you know, it kind of sucks if we actually look at, like, the crypto space across the board. I get the impression that they're sort of unwinding this DeFi story. So, I've said it repeatedly. I like innovation. I like uh, like buttons. If you like what I'm doing here today, please hit the like button. <laughs> Hopefully I did that nice and politely. People uh, enjoyed that. <laughs> um, but
But uh, I definitely don't think it's in your best interest to chase. Do not chase. Don't chase. Don't chase. Don't chase. Don't chase. Be Canadian. Colleen would appreciate it. Ah, oh, look at that. See? So, but I think that's Shane. <laughs> I knew as soon as I say somebody, say something, somebody goes to downvotes. I mean, it's almost comical. <laughs> I don't know how that works. Oh, well. <laughs> they didn't downvote before. They had, well, I've been blabbing away. Oh, Jesus, look what time it is. I got to get going here. Um, I've been blabbing away for an hour or two, but now they take the opportunity to go and downvote. I mean, how does that work? I, I don't get it. Ah, <laughs> uh, well. Anyway, um, finish off this video. Uh, it looks to me like uh, the DeFi story is sort of unwinding. Hey, there's another downvote. Thank you. Um, yeah, maybe, Colleen. Could be. Um, you know, I, I definitely don't think it's a good idea to chase, you know, either up or down. So if you haven't sold yet on something like a chain link, I don't think it makes a heck of a lot of sense to panic dump now. Uh, having said that, you know, you see chaos, you see uh, we'll move stop to trailing on the tag of this event. And we just took out this low member M's market structure. I don't see any reason why we can't dump here. Uh, and is there anything for a guy to do at this point on this trade? Actually, no. I just sit there and do absolutely nothing. Uh, so you just got to let it work. Um, and then also, too, uh, I think last week I had mentioned, I don't know whether I did these publicly. Whoop, that's the other one. Um, but we had a really fun walkthrough for all the people who like harmonics. Uh, a really a classic harmonic uh, Gartley fail. And actually, just the most pretty little doji top there, too, which was just an absolutely insane double top failure off a lower time frame chart. But for the purposes of this uh, demonstration, we said, and hey, maybe we're not like really super duper slick traders. We're just going to take the big fat four hour empire top trade. And what do you think? <laughs> not, not a bad trade, eh? I mean, could you guys live with this kind of performance? And, you know, I remember distinctly when I drew this shit up and I was going, uh-oh, there was one person in particular who was kind of like, don't shit on DeFi. No, it's awesome. It's the future. And I'm not here to shit on yeah, crypto. I'm not here to shit on Bitcoin or Ethereum. I'm just, I'm an old trader, dude. All I do is I talk levels. Right, and um, I don't know what's gonna happen in the future. I do know that, and you know, let's see, uh, YouTube, uh, here, here's an opportunity for you to participate. If I was a statistician and somebody came to me and said, statistically, Brian, about what are the odds statistically out of a hundred times that the market will rally into this red box and then roll over and test the other side of the range. And that's all this conversation is in a weird sort of way. It was very hard for me to convey this to students that I'm just a statistician. I'm not making a vote on whether this story is good or is bad. I'm just playing statistical models, which sucks, you know, because that tops a market statistical model say, hey, probably a good idea to think short. And that's right in the middle of everybody fucking circle jerking long. And then the exact opposite, uh, when everybody is circle jerking bearish, uh, that's usually actually the time when all the statistical models start turning back up. <laughs> it's so cliche. So it's not really like I knew some sort of inside story as to why this thing was failed. I mean, if you can couple that with fundamental reasons, awesome. That's like total you know, rational analysis. What I would just simply say is, wow, we had a lot of technical reasons to justify this thing tipping over. And sure enough, off it goes. Um, I don't know what's going to happen with these things. I will say, and I was having a lot of fun on the TRI site, uh, doing sort of the, uh, the uh, you know, uh, Lord of the Rings, Aragon, you know, um, the D5 bulls may fail, but not today, <laughs> you know, kind of thing. They're putting up a hell of a fight here, but I got to say, man, they're losing the fight. <laughs> 
<laughs> Poor D5 bulls. I mean, they tried like son of a bitch, and this is exactly where you would expect the fight to come in. So, ironically enough, it's it's actually very normal. This is exactly what's supposed to happen here. But at the same time, too, it's not a guarantee that the Bulls are actually going to win the fight. And if I'm not mistaken, where the hell are the Bulls? Do you see how important the volume? The Bulls just didn't show up. Look at the Bulls are all so super excited. Look at all this volume. Look at all this buying. Where the hell are the Bulls now? And that's, you know, that's the sad part about capitalism. The Bulls... These are all momentum players, right? And, you know, circle jerk players. It's the future, right? Enjoy. As soon as the momentum rolls over, divergences, all that kind of stuff, you know, momentum oscillators getting overbought, will you getting stupid? I think you've probably heard Brian talk about that once or twice before. The, you know, and especially if the momentum story does break, and I think on the daily charts we were looking a bit nasty there, right? Especially when you get things like moving average crosses. This is a fantastic momentum tool, I'll keep you honest. At this point here, the bear is actually driving the bus momentum-wise. Can you see the massive divergence in momentum? Oh my goodness! Look at the divergence in RSI on that move. Confirmed on the break. Lily, stupid. Are we? Is it a good idea for us to come in on the buy side when Willie is stupid? Anybody? <laughs> ah, good. Cheryl learned. I doubt any any of you on YouTube. Is it a good idea for us if we see the market stupid? And the worst part about Bill Willie being stupid is he can sit there for weeks and just drive you crazy. But this is a really good reason why you better just cool your jets if you see Willie stupid. Just, you gotta cool your jets. It's almost like pulling teeth. It's impossible to teach people. But anyway, it is what it is. Um, edutainment, right? Uh, somebody got a funny one-liner I can say right now. A uh, man walks into a bar with a six-inch pianist and a piano. <laughs> yes, that's right. I said pianist. <laughs> mm. Anyway, hopefully that put a smile on your face. Didn't even get to the punchline, huh? <clears throat> um, so... You know, until we, and it's fascinating that when they had this war here, um, to me, you know, the good part about it is the bears didn't come and just fucking shit all over this. So, you know, if we can start Wing out here again, maybe we can take another shot. But for the time being, it's like I'm from Missouri, right? You got to show me. Um, and what worries me here about DeFi kids is uh, this is technically now a valid bearish harmonic. Um, I don't know whether it's going to play out or not, but hopefully you can see A, B, C, D. Um, and what I find fascinating about this is really all they're doing. Can you see A, B, C, D? All they're going to do is just bring it right back down to basically where they brought this thing out. All the people that got excited all through here, right? That's actually where you should have been buying. Probably could have done reload zones off of that level there. I bet there were divergences that's developed there. There's your W, blah, 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 blah. There's the trend line break. There's the W on the other side of the trend line. Blah, 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 blah. Shut up, Brian. Right, whatever. Thing goes ratcheting higher. Public comes in. Oh, I gotta buy, gotta buy, gotta buy. And bang, 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 bang. And ironically enough, the bottom is going to be nothing more than them just bringing the damn thing right back down to where they started the game. I can't tell you how often I've seen that in capitalism. I mean, go look at your Bitcoin charts. <laughs> Same damn thing. Uh, rinse and repeat. So the one good thing, hopefully everybody looking at this image should go, well, I do see maybe uh, we can hold these lows. Maybe they dump it here. Hold these lows, turn it back up, and then we start getting bullish divergence, and we can start thinking about hunting longs again. 
But until that develops, I think you got to cool your jets. And, you know, there are some names that are looking especially dangerous, like this one here. I don't know. I don't even know this story. But uh, double top breakdown. So the M's already come in. Bang. And just like on Bitcoin, right, they engineer the counter trend rally to try and get short as high as possible. So it looks like the rally stalled there. Then you get this cute little fractal that actually fires. And then, oh, no, now we're getting W's on the, or M's, beg your pardon, on the other side of trend lines. This looks extremely dangerous. So, you know, caveat mTOR, just be careful. You know, if this is a bull, then maybe we do something like a bot. So just give this a little bit more time to develop. Something like that. Oops. There you go. So, uh, you know, the fact that this thing has gone and M'd out here, let's maybe just cool our jets. Uh, maybe we can, like, fractal out here, something like that. You know, give it the opportunity, one low, two lows. I don't know whether we took out those lows. But, you know, if you're a bull, at least just give this some time. And for heaven's sakes, can we please see some buyers? Where the hell are the damn buyers? This is an awful downtrend. So, ironically enough, your tell is can we actually start seeing higher lows and higher highs on the actual bull volume bars? So super, super important. Right now, that's like total hands off for a guy like me. Uh, you know, some of my little cheapos that I wanted to buy recently here, they, you know, they're kind of floundering. So it's not like, uh, uh. but I'll tell you, man, like this thing isn't moving an inch here. And where's the, where, where's the dump? You know, Ethereum's coming off. I, you know, I, I could see Ethereum come down here to 216 if this bear setup gets going in earnest. It's just developing now. So you can see my bot level. I'll probably be hunting 350 if that fails, looking for a dump down into the 215 area. You can see the momentum indicators are all looking very sanguine here. There's no hurry on the buy side whatsoever. Question for me now is have I waited long enough for this bear to actually develop to the point where there's a trade? Probably the trade comes in on a nice M on the other side of this trend line. So you can actually see uh, it's really developing now. So boom, boom, boom. Came back to it, rallied back up. If there was a divergence on here, even sexier. M'd out uh, through the trend line. So, you know, our trading rule is now we want to see an M on the other side of the trend line. And if we get that M, then it's going to be kind of like uh, one high, two highs. If I can get a nice M, oh, man, super sexy, you know, and uh, where's our bot level? Might even front run this if it comes in, right? Bot's down there at 350. If I could get a nice M to develop, say, somewhere around that, uh, what is that, 365 area, something like that, that would let me front run this a bit. Eh, we might make some good money on the short side. So that's sort of the same thing, you know, uh, Shane, Tuesday, Wednesday, London kill zone. Let's keep a close eye on how this is developing because I think there's probably a short trade developing on Ethereum now too. So uh, Brian's just full of sunshine and peanut butter, eh? <laughs> uh, let's see, anything else we should leave off? Oh, yeah, I was talking about the little penny pieces of shit. I keep a close eye on this Ubik, and um, and they're, they're now, gee whiz, what a surprise, they're getting into the D5 game and they got a whole roadmap and all that. So that explains why this thing was rallying up. Did notice one of the coins on their blockchain was this Geo. I tell you, something's going on with this thing. Do yourself a favor. Now, I don't want to, I'm not recommending anything, but this is a fun story. It's kind of like Doge. You almost have to have a little bit on this books. If you know, if you're at TRI and you don't have at least one sat worth of geo on the books, I'd be pissed off. <laughs> Mind you, I don't know. Are they available to the American Trex people? It might not be. It might be only the uh, the international Trex people. Um, I did. You know, you can DeFi this through the Ubic uh, blockchain uh, app. Their new sort of creature. So. They find it interesting, you know, through all that nonsense, ideas like this, they're just parked. They're just sitting there. 
Uh, I love this thing, man. I'll buy more if I can get it, but I don't think they want to give me fills. But, you know, I had names like Decred, and what I noticed here with Decred, we've lost these recent lows, so we're heading lower. But where are we heading? Looks to me like the original bottom they're going to go after is uh, right in there. And, you know, I've told you guys this before. Decred was the very first coin that went ape shit there back in early 2017. So believe it or not, I actually think the next bull market will be kicked off by Decred, but that's just me. So where is that horizontal level relative to where we are now? Uh, it's still quite a bit lower. We uh, It definitely looks to me like if you traded this on leverage, took a little bigger size position, you better uh, get honest and get the fuck out. I just nanny nibbled and it was like 0 0.02 BTC or something. And I will be buying more. But I'll wait for the next potential bullish setup to add to the trade. So just FYI there. I'm not doing anything right now, and this thing's looking grim. Um, rest of them, yeah, you know, did hear Amanda on uh, the net here recently, so I don't know if she's up to something. I don't mind Kavarkinator's level. I came in off this level, and you can see I'm probably a bit early, but I don't mind Dash down in here. And again... You know, I did hear some people saying that the privacy coins are coming under a lot of pressure, so be careful on that regard, eh? Um, you know, uh, as in, you know, like Link, this RLC, which has one, been one of my favorites. We've done very, very well on this. But you guys can see, man, this this looks head and shouldersy. So if this DeFi thing falls apart, this is another one that's done pretty well over the past year or two. So could it come all the way right back down to the bottom? Sure. Wouldn't surprise me. Um, There was one. What was it that I just bought? Oh, yeah, this. Uh, well, I didn't buy. Trying to buy it. Fuckers won't fill me. I'm bidding here 25. I don't know whether I'm going to get a filly or not, but I'm patient. So no big deal if I miss it. But these are, you know, this is like Geo. I mean, it's just sitting here. I don't know whether this is the bottom or not. You know me. I don't throw a hell of a lot of money at these things. But um, I'm going to take a shot against these lows. It's not a bad idea. I don't know whether that would be an appropriate risk. I think I'd probably have to risk against this double bottom. So that means probably to make it worthwhile, I'm going to want to shoot for some sort of tag up top here. Eh, is that realistic? I don't know. Maybe look for a tag of the trend line here. Good part about getting in here is we can actually get a double off on any sort of test of this high. But could this thing break down? Sure. Um, it was one that popped up on the screeners, and that's why I'm taking this trade as just purely a screener trade. So if it fails, it fails. No big deal. Um, all right, so that's basically what I'm seeing in the world. Oh, keep an eye on this crazy DGB. I noticed uh, that DGB people like my sort of rants about them recently. We're talking about development that they're doing. You can see how a bot level has come in here. So this is just yet another one. We've been following bots the whole way up here. Um, so I just found it fascinating. Got a pretty good looking W there. Looks like the market's trying to resolve that. Eh, maybe hunt another pullback here, see if you can sneak in on some sort of bullish reversal. That looks pretty interesting. Um, again, though, you know, it's broader. You know, I wouldn't even be surprised if the stock market comes off a huge chunk here. So I don't know whether it's so much that crypto sucks. I think it's. Some of the names that have been bid up recently, they just were bid up way too far, way too fast. Uh, and they got to clean up, including Bitcoin and Ethereum and Litecoin and all that stuff. Um, you know, this OMG, I took a swing trade is a good example. I took a swing trade off of this guy anticipating that a bottom was coming in here and it didn't come in and I just got the fuck out. I don't, you know, somebody even in the lounge afterward was like, well, what do you think of it? And I'm like, I don't know. I have, I have no opinion. I'm out. The said the reason why I bought it, it's over. It didn't work. I have no opinion. I don't know where this thing's going. And that, unfortunately, is, is that's an honest answer for you. So uh, that's the kind of market state. If your setups are failing, don't be a hero here. Uh, you know, this Digi you might take this bot, and if it breaks down through these lows, better get the fuck out. Uh, that's the rules of the bot. But, um, you know, it's a, it's a crazy trader's life. This is this is the time of year where we're swimming into the tide. We're, you know, sailing into the wind. 
a lot of people in the public are probably best just to put your money on the sidelines and wait till like February, March when all this shit usually bottoms. And then you're sailing with the tide or sailing with the wind, uh, swimming with the tide, all that. So keep that in the back of your mind, people. So with that said, party party. Woohoo! Awesome to see the school term up and running. Kiran's kicking ass in level two program. Uh, level three or seem to be getting settled in. We had a great session yesterday and a whole bunch of gung-ho level oneers. Uh, so uh, we're off just doing our thing. Hopefully we're going to make a positive difference in this world one day at a time. You know, try to play from a position of strength. Uh, don't take any wooden nickels. But, uh, always say please and thank you. <laughs> what else could I throw in there? Have yourselves a great day. PMA for the win. Uh, hit the like button. Subscribe. Ring Colleen's bell so you get notified when we do more for these free videos. Uh, check out the previous videos comments when I give assignments. Like I said, those comments are fucking priceless. Um, and um, just try and be the best person that you can be. That's about all we could do in this crazy world, eh? All right, everybody, all the best, and bye for now.